Please pay attention to this. There's going to be a quiz with the winner receiving another round of the breakfast buffet here. So um, this is really the next challenge that we, that we face as an industry. And I think Excel and here in Colorado are in pretty good shape, at least for today, to meet these challenges. I'm not going to go through every single one of the rules unless you want me to, and then we might be here quite a lot longer than my allotted time. But I'd point out a couple things. One, there's some rules that haven't been finalized yet. They will be finalized after the election, and they deal with carbon, both from existing sources and new sources. We're really anxiously watching what that's going to mean to the industry. In the meantime, and it's in the center of your screen there, it's called MATS, and we love acronyms in our, in our business. MATS stands for Mercury and Acid Toxin Gas, uh, standards rather. Um, that's the, that is the, the EPA rule that everybody's talking about today, that you're reading about in the papers. That's the rule that is looking at, uh, has utilities looking at coal plants and retiring them. Uh, estimates range between 20 to 30 percent of the coal fleet may be shut down or repowered to natural gas. It's in a very compressed time frame. So what that means is we're going to have a mad dash as people put that pollution abatement equipment on their coal plants or, re, or, or repower those coal plants to natural gas. It has people like myself in the industry worried about reliability and things like gas infrastructure. We're going to talk a little bit about gas. I think there's plenty of gas in the U.S., but the infrastructure to get it from the well to the, uh, to the uh, power plant needs development in some parts of the country. So it's concerning. That's the bad news. I mentioned we're in pretty good shape. The good news is, by working with people in the community, our stakeholders, our customers, uh, regulators, uh, we've gotten ahead of the game through our environmental leadership, and we're going to continue to get ahead of the game. It's renewables, where we're the number one wind provider in the United States and have been for many years. And frankly, although it was a bit controversial, it's the Clean Air, Clean Jobs uh, Act that was passed here a couple years ago. It's given us that leg up to get started on that tsunami wave of EPA regulations and do it earlier, get under the wire, because I think everybody in this room knows when everybody's trying to do the same thing at the same time with limited resources, it tends to push the price of things up. So we're in much better shape today. And as a reminder, Clean Air, Clean Job Act uh, required uh, uh, Piesco to uh, put pollution abatement equipment on about 950 megawatts of coal and then retire or repower another 900 megawatts of older, less efficient coal plants. So we're well on our way to getting started on that, lining up those resources, et cetera. In fact, I would argue that post that act being passed, we've actually seen a pr an improvement in the economics. Natural gas prices have fallen, and we've taken a look at what we thought we would have to do as far as adding new generation or building some things ourselves, and we realized we don't need as much generation as we thought, and that, some, and that other commercial providers, independent power producers, may offer a better deal for our customers. So again, controversial. Some of you in the room might have not liked it, but I can tell you, I think it's gotten us ahead of what was coming anyway, and we'll be able to do it at a better price point for our customers. And this next slide, I think, is very important, too. As we all, uh, you might have heard in the industry, the, the dash for gas. Uh, and last year, I think we, the industry, uh, you saw more gas, primarily economically driven, but more gas uh, used than coal for the first time ever. In fact, uh, we're actually at 1991 carbon levels in the U.S. due to the switch over to gas and the, uh, and, and the economy being where it is. You know, you learned in first grade, if not sooner, that don't put all your eggs in one basket. I think what you're seeing on this slide is we at Excel Energy and here at, at, uh, in Colorado and Piesco, we're not putting all our eggs in one basket. We're going to use a little less coal going forward, albeit more efficient, cleaner coal. We're going to still have gas, and we're going to have renewables, and it's going to be very balanced, and we're not going to have an over-reliance on any one fuel. So I think this is a very good plan for our customers and stakeholders here in Colorado. Um, I will also tell you that it's going to cost money to uh, achieve the goals, to achieve our mission of clean, safe, reliable energy at a competitive price. And as a company at the Excel Energy level, 
Um, and I think there's a screen cutting, oh no, it's, it's there. Uh, uh, the, the overall spend we're going to do is $13.4 billion over the next five years. And you can see Colorado is going to get a big chunk of that. Again, it's pretty balanced. We're going to be putting money into the environment, primarily clean air, clean jobs, our distribution system, steadily maintaining the integrity of our electric grid. We're going to put money into transmission, making sure the transmission is reliable and also can access these uh, renewable resources. And we're, going to talk, and we're going to put money into the gas system. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. It's all to make sure that we continue to keep the lights on and do so in a reliable manner. It's also going to require significant amounts of capital to be raised. We're going to spend about $4 billion more than we take in. So that means that we have to attract capital, whether it's debt or equity. And so far, we've got an investment grade rated balance sheet. Uh, the investors like our story. We're able to attract that capital, and it really hinges upon a constructive regulatory compact. And when I say constructive regulatory compact, I mean getting regulatory relief for those investments we want to make. That's fair to customers and, frankly, fair to shareholders. I think a great example of that here in Colorado was the multi-year plan that we entered into. We certainly didn't get everything we wanted. Customers gave, and it was a good, a good compromise at the end of the day, but it allowed us to move forward, have our marching orders, know what we're going to do, and customers know what they were going to be charged ultimately. That is an example of constructive regulation. And we need to have that here in Colorado and, frankly, in other jurisdictions. Again, we're in eight states, 21 different jurisdictions, so we have a lot of work to do. Let me just tell you, I mean, I keep talking about our mission, and it's clean, safe, reliable energy, and I do not forget at a competitive price. We all absolutely know that nobody likes, and in many cases can afford very much in the way of rate increases, and we're aware of that. At the same time, we have to achieve those other objectives. So we work on that balance very hard. The examples you see on the screen there are examples where we took a resource plan that was filed before the drop in natural gas prices, before the slowdown in sales due to the economy, and we took a look at it and decided to make some changes to help our customers save money. You see that we aren't going to do as much on solar. We're not going to build some transmission lines that we were originally thinking we would build. The one is the, the uh, transmission line in the San Luis Valley for about $190 million, our share. We're going to continue to look at what makes sense for our customers given the new economic realities we live in. We've modified the solar rewards program. We've been very aggressive selling RECs in the California, helping to reduce the cost to our customers as those REC sales came in. Now, a lot of that sounds like, hey, we're not going to be doing as much in the environment. And I just want to point out that that's really not true. One of the things you see on your screen there is that we rebid wind as part of our desire to get costs lower for our customers. Well, when you're ahead of the game, and here in Colorado, we are ahead of the standards, the renewable portfolio standards, it gives you the luxury of being more picky and more opportunistic. It's exactly what we did. Those bids came in, not only were they lower, they were so low that we decided to go from 200 megawatts of wind to 400 megawatts of wind because we could actually sync the wind up, that extra 200 megawatts of wind, at a price that was on par, if not lower, than a natural gas alternative. So that is a really good place to be, and uh, we view wind as energy, of course, because you still need the capacity. So it's an, it's an energy, and it's basically a heads against natural gas, which is volatile, but we all know that things change. And that leads to the next section of my presentation, and, and again, we've got the EPA uncertainty. We've got economic times that we live in that makes things uncertainty. We're seeing trends and sales that we really need to understand better. But we can't stop moving forward. We have to make decisions today to uh, do the right things for our customers. We're going to live with those decisions for many years to come. So let's look at some of the choices we have. The first and foremost is conservation and energy efficiency programs. I can just tell you that we are at a leader, uh, and you saw one example again in the film in this regard. It works for our customers. It works for all customers. It's, uh, it's probably the most economic resource we can do. It's never easy to ask to sell less of your product. And we estimate that our, our energy efficiency programs probably reduce 
our sales growth by about 100 basis points or 1 percent. So when you're growing at 1.5 percent without those programs, that means we're only growing at about a half a percent a year in sales. But again, it's helping you manage your bills and we're happy to do it and it's the right thing to do. Eventually we do have to bring in more generation. So I thought I'd walk you through some of the economics of those choices, some of the things that we have to consider when we're making those choices and just kind of put it in perspective of what makes sense.